we just take it and we win the game. What's going on guys? If you want to support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code ITRESOLVES10YP for 10% off your entire purchase. What is going on everybody and welcome back to some more standard gameplay. I hope you guys are doing exceptionally well today. We're going to be jumping into a really fun one today, but before that, I just want to remind you, please make sure you subscribe to the channel. It's a great way to support. It is also a great way to enter all of our future giveaways, including the one that is finishing up this week. Uh, we are giving away a draft booster of Kamigawa Neon Dynasty, so I encourage you, subscribe. This is the last minute, so you got to make sure you get that subscription in before the 23rd, but it's going to be a really exciting giveaway, and of course, future giveaways giveaways are uh, included in that so please keep that in mind but let's talk about today's deck guys this is brought to us by hello good game uh, we've talked about him multiple times if you don't know who he is I don't know what you're doing in the community he is a massive content creator fantastic deck builder uh, and this is no exception I will link him down below though if you want to check him out uh, this is Gruul Modified. Now, we played Simic Modified and went undefeated just a couple days ago uh, over the weekend, and that was a very sick deck. But this one, I think, has some potential as well, and I wanted to try it out here today just to get kind of a comparison between the two. So some of the things that we get out of this one that are very similar to the, uh, the, the Simic Modified list, obviously, we've got Kodama of the West Tree, one of the big payoff cards for, the, for this deck. You can... Um, theoretically get a bunch of basic lands out of your deck in a single turn with this hopefully at least two or three ramp yourself into the following turn and in combination with things like ranger class where you can level that up to level three you can really start to play things off the top and just kind of go go absolutely crazy with it now we do have a few other things just far sentinel here is here for some ramp we've got the blizzard brawl we've even got the snakes he unveiled now this has added value of course in this deck because not only does it give hex proof but that one one counter creates a modified creature and therefore it will get all future benefits of things like that Kodama. Uh, we do have the Thundering Raiju here, which is another kind of uh, payoff card where it can deal some damage equal to the number of modified creatures you control other than the Raiju. Uh, and so we'll hopefully be able to deal some damage there. Reckless Stormseeker uh, allowing us to kind of get in very quickly here. The Brazen Outlaw giving us ramp. The Innkeeper giving us life gain and ramp. The Lizard Blades able to equip to anything, create a modified creature, give it double strike, and really get through for a lot of damage, in particular with that Kodama. And then, of course, finally, we've got the partners here. Uh, two, three, first strike, reach for four. At the beginning of your uh, combat step, though, you actually get X11 counters that you get to throw around where it's equal to the power of the partners. That creature also gains haste. So, again, another way to provide that. Kazandu Mammoth, just a really big powerhouse card. That's really good to equip those Lizard Blades to if we can get there. Uh, and theoretically, we should be able to win pretty quickly. We'll see how it goes, of course. Uh, for some tech in the lands, we do have Den of the Bugbear. Really good option for these decks because you can spit out that 1-1 token that you can later throw some counters on, and it leaves that token behind, which is really important. And then we do have a Basuji, or Bosaiju, Bus Bus whatever it is, the one that endures uh, <laughs> for a little bit of added tech. Uh, but that's it. It's a pretty straightforward deck, but again, I think a very powerful one. We're going to jump into some games. We're going to see how it goes. And again, hello, good game. Thank you so much for sharing this list over on Aether Hub. Let's see how it does, guys. All right, guys, and here we are for game number one. Now, this is a bit of a slower hand, honestly. It doesn't seem too fast, but we do have some really interesting stuff that we can get down. I'm going to try this one. Not sold that it's going to work, but I think it's worth giving a shot to. We'll lead on that green source. We don't necessarily need to pick between the two in this instance, but I feel like we might as well. Uh, looks like they do have a shambling gas, which is very telling uh, that we're probably going to be against a bit of a rough matchup. Probably going to have quite a bit of removal for us, and so we are going to have to kind of fight through that a little bit. Uh, that Stormseeker will be a very helpful card for us, though. We can get that down quickly. Uh, and then theoretically give like the Kazandu Mammoth uh, haste on the next turn. So we'll see if that actually pans out, but I think that's probably going to end up being the play. We do have the Lizard Blades as well. That's kind of nice. Let's go ahead. Let's get that Stormseeker in there. Uh, we can go ahead and give it haste and just get an attack in. Pretty straightforward. We don't really have to worry too much. If they want to block, that's fine. But here we are going to outpace them unless, of course, they can just remove this, which realistically is going to happen. Um, but... I think that's okay 
Uh, curious to see what we can get next turn. Um, I don't want to drop the mammoth for a land, but if we have to, we have to, you know? We can draw a land and then theoretically get like a Kodama down plus leaving up Snakeskin Veil or something along those lines. We'll see how it works, but very intrigued to see how this goes. A Blizzard Brawl. Uh, not a super helpful card at the moment, if I'm honest. <laughs> um but that is okay let's do this so we can give this double strike what's kind or excuse me haste which is really nice uh because it already has that double strike which is just really helpful so let's throw this out here and we'll see what they want to do we do get to leave up the snakeskin veil with this attack which i think is very important for us because again we are trying to kind of keep out of range of any removal spells that they might have if they happen to have something like a meat hook massacre we really can't do too much about that and I think, honestly, at this point, I am going to drop this down. I don't love the idea of having to, but we do have the partners in hand, and that is such a powerful card for us that I'd like to make sure we can actually play it. We also have the Kodama here at some point that we'd probably like to get down, so I think this is probably just the best option. Perfect. Okay, so this is actually going to work in our favor. What we're going to be able to do is uh, Snakeskin Veil onto the Reckless Stormseeker. Now that allows us to Kodama next turn and get this in, which is huge, absolutely massive. So we'll see what happens. Oh, that's very good as well. Um, hmm. All right, so again, we get to give this Trample, which is huge for us. Let's go ahead and actually fight off. I kind of want to do this. Uh, yeah, let's fight off one of these guys. This isn't an amazing play by any means, but what this does is allow us to make sure we are not going to lose out to anything here. Now, what do we want to throw this on? I think it's just this. We can get in for the attack here uh, very freely. Perfect. Now, we're going to be able to get some basic lands here, which is huge. So let's get that. There we go. And next turn, we again have the partners. Uh, very interesting that they have this and not the Meat Hook Massacre. I was fully expecting that, but we'll see. Again, we were just decentivizing the uh, the blocks there by getting rid of that Prosperous Innkeeper. It really didn't help too much, but it's something. And there we go, guys. We got the first win. That was absolutely perfect. Amazing. Let's jump into game two. All right, guys, and here we are for game number two. This is actually a pretty strong hand. So we've got the Jaspara Sentinel into the Innkeeper. Going to give us a little bit of ramp here. And then, of course, we've got the Mammoth and the Thundering Raiju to really, really get out there and uh, hopefully deal some massive damage early if we can do it. So I'm going to keep this. We don't have a whole lot. Like a Blizzard Brawl would be helpful, something along those lines. Uh, but regardless, we still have a pretty strong start. So we're going to go for it here. Very curious to see what the opponent is actually running. We will see. It looks like snow-covered plains, so we probably are going to be against a mono white list, which in itself is a little scary, but uh, we'll do the best we can to fight our way through. We'll do this. Um, I think we just leave this up. We could have attacked here. Realistically, they're going to get a counter on this, but... I think we uh, don't really need to push it at this point. I think right now we just kind of sit back, see what we can do. Uh, then deals extra where X is the number of mono creatures. That's just to the opponents. That is something we have to consider here. Now, do we want to double block this? I'm going to say no. Uh, so we'll just take that. Again, not necessarily ideal, but I think it'll be okay. All right, let's do this. We'll auto pay here. I want to use the mana we have available for us, and this is just, I think, the best way to do it. So let's do this. Um, we'll put a counter here. Again, just giving us as big of a, of a butt here as we can get. Now, they could double block for us, uh, and that's perfectly fine. Yeah. Uh, the question is, which of these are we more worried about? I think we killed the Cleric. Uh, well, actually, yeah, I guess we kill both, but um, both of those were actually big problem spells for us, so I think it's good that we were able to do that. Looks like they are going to get their second spell this turn, which is a bit annoying, but we'll see what we can do. Um, now, again, do we want to double block here? We certainly can. It looks like they're not willing to attack. That's fascinating, actually. Uh, I like that. 
All right. Well, in that case, um, yeah, I think we just throw the, the uh, partners out here. This is going to provide us with a little more that we can do. Um, I think we throw the counters here. Now, the question is, do we attack in? Um, and I actually think we can. Now, they can, again, double block here if they want, but it's really not that big of a, a loss for us to lose the Sentinel. And now they're going to be facing down a good bit of damage each turn. Uh, we want to make sure we're providing as much pressure as we can, I believe, in this instance. They are going to really power up their board in the next couple turns, and so that is going to be a bit scary for us, but we'll see what we can do. Hopefully we can draw something pretty important here. Uh, interesting that they're attacking here. This has first strike. Uh, and so that was a free kill for us. Uh, I think they mi must not have realized it was a first striker. Uh, very interesting. All right. We'll throw the mammoth down. We're going to gain a life out of that. We're going to throw the outlaw down. We're going to gain another life out of that. Uh, and now at this point, what we can do is, I think, uh, where do we want to throw the counters? I think we'll throw them on the mammoth just to give us that blocker. Um, and we can attack here, here, and here. This does get haste. So now they're facing down quite a bit of damage at this point. Uh, I did forget this gains haste. So at this point, we can just go ahead and attack in with it. And now we're we're sitting fairly well here. Now they can level this up once to give a Lord effect to their board, but that's not going to deal 18 damage. That is for sure. Uh, so we should be okay here. Sure interesting that they even attack uh okay we just take it and we win the game perfect guys that is two for two so far let's see if we can keep the momentum going and get some more wins with this list this is awesome and here we are guys for our third game now the question is do we want to keep this we have no red mana doubling up on the outlaws as well i'm gonna take the mulligan here i feel like that might just be the correct play here is an interesting hand but i think one we can keep now the question is, what do we throw back? I actually do think it's a Mammoth. Now I'm gonna lead on this as the safe play because we do have a turn three Storm Seeker that I'd love to get down here. We'll see if this actually works, but uh, if we do this, we can Ranger Glass this turn, then have that third untapped land very crucially to give us that Storm Seeker. Definitely the safer play. Uh, we could have waited on the Mammoth just to see if we draw a third land, uh, but I think this is probably a better play. Um, and we can just level this up if we need to, or, you know, just drop that storm seeker. We'll see. Okay. Well, we did end up drawing the land and that's okay. Let's go ahead and throw this down. Looks like we're potentially just against the life gain deck, in which case I'm all for dealing as much damage as we can as early as we can. Uh, this is not a list that you want to give a whole lot of time to. And so keeping the pressure on is very important. That's really the only reason I could imagine they're playing all of these little lands here. What is this? Uh, oh, Light Pulse. Okay, whenever an aura enters the battlefield, if you cast it, you may search your library for an aura card with mana value less than. Okay, cool. So we kill it. Um, <laughs> definitely just kill it. Um, so we're gonna target here and target here. Easy enough. Uh, let's make sure we level this up. Um, and it can be really either one of these that we give the counter to. Let's drop the counter on this, I think. And now we've we set up very, very well for the Thundering Raiju. The only trick is we didn't get to leave up a Snakeskin Veil, but... Ah, this is the Rune deck. Okay, fascinating. The Rune deck is a really cool one. We actually played the Storm version of this list, and it was really sick. But uh, I'm very curious to see how this actually goes. All right, so first things first, let's make sure we're dropping the land. Let's do this. That allows us to snakeskin veil as we need to. All right. Um, let's give that count or the uh, the damage there. Uh, we'll throw the counter here again. We'll throw the counter here, I think. Um, so now we've just got quite a bit of damage. Let's see what they do. They kind of, I mean, they literally have to block. Um, the question is, all right, that's fine. One damage off from being able to just straight kill them. Uh, we could have snakeskin veiled to power something up here. We may have actually been able to with this. No, no, we wouldn't have. Awesome. That's three straight wins. That is three straight wins. Let's see if we can go for a fourth guys. That will be our last game, but I, I, I have a, I have an inkling about this one. 
All right, guys, and here we are for our next game, uh, our fourth game, in fact. This is a tricky hand. Um, so we've got the outlaw that does provide us with treasure tokens that would theoretically get us to where we need to be. However, I don't think we can keep it. I don't love that. Um, this is better, I think. We've got both colors of mana. We still have the outlaw uh, to give us those treasure tokens, but importantly, we've got the ranger class and we even have the Kodama here. I think the throwaway card is, I honestly don't know. Uh, it might be the lizard blades. Let's do that. Um, I'm not I'm not sold on that, but I do think that probably is the right call. Uh, just because you never really know with this. So let's throw let's throw that green source out there first. We'll get that den of the bugbear down, most likely the upcoming turn, so we can go ahead and get the outlaw going. I think we want to lean towards the outlaw. That's very good for us. Uh, just because this does give us that treasure token. Uh, and so the sooner we can get that going, the more off the more optimized it will be for us to give us all those treasure tokens. Looks like we may have a struggle here, though. This is going to be... Oh, an artifacts list. Okay. Very interesting. And they have a portable hole for us. That's not good. Um, okay. Uh, let's attack in. I'm happy to trade this off if they'd like, but I kind of doubt they will. Yeah. Didn't really think so. Um... Now we know they've got the portable hole coming, so what's going to be the best bet for us? We could just drop the Raiju, though we can do that next turn. I think what we're going to end up doing is this. Um, and I think I will go ahead and level it up. They can target non-land permanent, so they can definitely hit the Ranger class if they would like. Uh, and we're sort of tempting them to at this point. Now this is going to get a counter on it. Uh, only triggers once each turn. Okay, looks like they're going to take the outlaw. Interesting. This is fascinating. Really, really interested to see how this actually works. They do have the third land. Let's see what else they have. I think if they attack, we don't block. Just to force them to use up their removal as best we can. Um, yep, not going to block. Now, the question for us is which of these would we rather have? Oh, okay. Uh, with that in mind, I'm definitely going to go with Kodama. The reason being, this is going to guarantee us another land drop, uh, which I think is pretty crucial for us. So let's make sure we go ahead and do that. We'll, we'll just get another green source here. And I think that that sets us up pretty well. Now, I'm sure they can remove this Kodama or the Ranger class. Either way is actually very good, but um, I think this is just our best bet very curious about this deck this is definitely the artifacts list uh so i'm expecting things like tezzeret maybe even jenga taxes later on if we can get there that's just a good controlling card it's not really an artifacts energy as much as just good um but next turn if they don't kill kodama we actually have the thundering raiju that can just come down immediately ah teferi okay interesting um This is kind of fine, uh, solely because they're tapped out for the turn. And I think that that alone is actually kind of okay with us. Um, we can actually get rid of this at some point here too. Uh, so we can play multiple things this turn. We can drop that Prosperous Innkeeper. That's going to give us the treasure token, and then we can use that treasure token to play that Thundering Raiju. Now, this is only going to hit for one. Uh, when we attack here, but I think it's still worth it. Uh, we're going to send both of these here. We're going to send this here. Uh, target a creature we control. Let's throw the counter. I guess here. And here. <laughs> Might as well, I suppose. We can just spread this out as best we want. And uh, now modified creatures again have trample, and so... Blocking really didn't help that much, and we still get the trigger off of Kodama. Let's get a, uh, a mountain this time. So we get rid of Teferi. We also get rid of the Ingenious Smith. Now, I'm expecting, yeah, 100% thought that would be coming, and that's fine. The reason being, we can now ultimate, or level up, excuse me, this Ranger class and be in a much better position. Alternatively, we can just attack with the Den of the Bugbear. 
which I kind of like. Uh, I think we're going to go this route. It's a little, like, unexciting, I know. Um, but it does throw a counter here, and that counter does stick. So next turn, we can drop, you know, Kodama and eventually have this attacking in. We're st we still got him on a clock, so they got to deal with this. They're being very very careful with the way they are tapping their mana, which is quite smart. I'm very curious to see what they actually do here, though. There is Tez. We figured Tez was coming. Ooh, this is going to be a little scary, but again, we might have a chance here. I'm, I'm kind of into this deck, I'm not going to lie. Cool. So they get the big 4-4 four, four creature land, uh, which is awesome. Interesting. I still think we just activate the den. Um, I'm gonna drop this down as a land too. I don't think we actually worry about this. I'm gonna throw the counter here. Um, we'll attack here, just because. Uh, it doesn't really matter. They're gonna. They're. It looks like just gonna trade off. That's fine. We get in for a little bit on both. It's not that exciting, I know, but okay. They're gonna Doom Scar. That's perfectly fine. So now they have to plus up. They can't uh, minus two, which is kind of the important thing there because they can't just drop a 4 4 creature, uh, which is kind of where I wanted to make sure we had them. Uh, otherwise, I think we were gonna be in big trouble. The interesting about the interesting thing about this artifact list is you do see so they do have disruption pool but it's one of those things where you don't necessarily see a ton of counters because they're trying to play artifacts right so they don't want to play at instant speed um i don't think but all right they're gonna draw a card that's cool i think we definitely activate this first let's see what we hit nothing so we'll drop that kodama very much wish we could attack this turn but we just can't that's fine um, and now again, we've kind of set ourselves up though, is the key, you, you know, like we know we're going to draw this land. That's fine. We can drop that immediately. And then we've just got Ranger class kind of doing its thing for us. Now they can sack the Tez if they want and give themselves a creature or, you know, we'll see what they want to do. Um, but again, if we can get like a reckless storm seeker, like finishes the game now, you know what I mean? Like hopefully. Okay, there's portable hole. They can hit. Okay, they're going to hit the ranger class. Definitely the best call, I think, for them. Um, very curious to see what else they have here. They're going to make that a 4-4. That does wall us. Uh, that's a big, big wall. And they have the Hall of the Storm Giants. That's going to be a problem for us. They did sack the Tez, which is semi-helpful. Um, we have to pass. We can't do it. We may have found ourselves into a bad position here. Uh, maybe not getting the Kodama down sooner was a mistake. That might have been something we could have done. Um, but I thought it best to activate that Ranger class just so we could get off the top of our deck and kind of have that extra card advantage. Uh, but unfortunately, it just did not pan out for us here. So, a little nervous. <laughs> we do still have a good bit of, uh, of life to play with here. Though they did play a mirror shell crab. Interesting. Okay. So they can... Uh, awesome. All right. They're going to go ahead and do this. Now, they, I assume, are going to attack in? Yeah. Definitely the right call. We just pass. There's nothing we can do. That's fine. What could we have? A Blizzard Brawl is actually quite good for us. So what we can do is target this, target this. Uh, that's going to get this off of the field. So we do get our Ranger class back, which is pretty helpful because now we get a 2-2. Two -two. We can activate this. And we can activate it again. Uh, now, this isn't necessarily amazing, but... We do get some stuff off the top here, and that is a pretty important turn for us. I think Blizzard Brawl was definitely the best thing we could have drawn. Uh, this is still going to be a problem for us, though. That shell, that Mirror Shell Crab is just big, and they do still have that Hall of the Storm Giants. So we have to be very cautious about how we do this. Um, 
not optimistic. However, we do still have some life total to play with. They're gaining life, though. That's kind of the problem. Uh, so we'll we'll see how this goes. Another portable hole. My goodness. All right. Fair enough. They just have... I think they've had all of them. Is that correct? One... No, they've had three. They might have a fourth still, you know, waiting in the wings for us here. But uh, this has turned into a really good game. So I'm perfectly happy regardless of the outcome. I would love an undefeated run with this, but I don't think we're going to get it. Uh, still a very, very sick deck, though. This is amazing. Uh, let's see. How many Doom Stars have they run? Three. There's that haul. We knew that was going to be coming. Uh, the good news, again, we have some life total to play with. Okay, they're even going to crew this up. We do have some life total to play with here, but how do we need to block seven plus five all right so we do have to block something here i think we just block this take the rest no i think we just block this all right so we're down to six um but they are tapped out for the turn so i'm trying to think what we could draw here there's probably not a lot Oh, and we knew there was a land on top too, didn't we? So we do this, keep this one, and now we've got the blocker, but they they have enough to kill us here, unfortunately. I think we just good game them. They got us here, guys. That was a very cool game though, and pretty close, honestly. We got them down to three. I think they just stabilized a little too quickly for us. They, they got so many portable holes. What do they have? Ah, just the hull. All right, guys, let's talk about this deck. All right, so out of four games, we got three solid wins with this list and a very close fourth game, I would say. Uh, obviously, we didn't quite get the win, but we were against a control deck, and I think naturally, anytime you're going to be playing a deck like this, you're going to find that to be a struggle. However, I just want to say, hello, good game, an amazing build. Absolutely love this one. The Simic uh, modified deck and now the Gruul modified deck have both really kind of caught my eye. I was a little surprised because again, you know, Kadama is one of my favorite cards from the new set for sure. But overall, I didn't really think of Modified as being like, I, I thought it would be competitive, of course, but I didn't necessarily think it would be like the top tier. And maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but it seems to be doing really, really well. We've played some enchantment stuff, which obviously got a good bit of support here. Uh, and we've played some of the other new mechanics of the deck, like the vehicle stuff, uh, or not of the deck, of the set. Uh, like vehicles and things like that and um, you know this one just feels really really good to me it does feel better than ninjutsu for sure uh, which is surprising because again I thought that would be kind of the premier ability of the set but regardless an absolute blast of a deck to play I do encourage you to try this one out it's nice because a lot of the cards are still cards that we've been seeing in standard for a while now so you might already have you know the ranger classes the mammoths the things like that uh, there are a, new, a few new cards, of course, Kodama as well as the Raiju, but overall it's it's mostly the same. And so it's, uh, it's a pretty easy deck to make and it's a fun one too. So I encourage you to check this one out. Again, check out Hello Good Game down below. Thank you so much for sharing this list and thank you all for watching. I really do appreciate it, guys. We'll see you again very soon.